This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you and what a pleasant start it is to this day in the Commonwealth. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. Hope you're having an awesome start to your morning. Nice chill in the air out there. It's very no? nice. All right. Now at 6.30, dozens were killed in an attack at an Istanbul airport, and a Kentuckian was supposed to be leaving from the airport this morning. We'll have the latest from Istanbul and hear from him just ahead. Today, people will get a chance to voice their opinions about Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin's overhaul of the state's Medicaid program. That details coming up. And a pastor accused of coming to Kentucky to try to have sex with a child has been found dead in Georgia. That and more on WKYT this morning. There is a bit of a chill in the air, especially central and northern zones early this morning. It looks great outside. Then we hit the afternoon. Still fantastic day, 79 degrees, a lot of sunshine. How long does it last? I'll answer that and also show you a few rumbles for the weekend. That's coming up. All right, let's get everybody to the latest news now. Well, flight operations have resumed at Turkey's largest airport. Officials there in that country are trying to figure out what led to a deadly attack on the country's largest airport. Dozens were killed and more than 140 injured when at least three suicide bombers blew themselves up at Istanbul's International Airport yesterday. Turkish officials say ISIS was involved. Tina Kraus has the latest. This video posted on social media appears to show the moment one of the explosions tore through Turkey's largest airport Tuesday. Shortly before the blast, Turkish officials say assailants armed with AK 47s opened fire at the entrance of the international terminal. This footage appears to show an officer taking one of them down moments before the suspect blew himself up. Outside the airport, frantic passengers ran to safety as emergency crews rushed in to help the wounded. One guy had holes in his back from shrapnel, or from, from glass. Others rushed to a nearby hospital where victims were being treated. This Turkish man was desperate, looking for his mother, as distraught relatives wailed behind him. While there's been no claim of responsibility, federal officials tell CBS News the incident has all the hallmarks of an ISIS attack. Speaking from Aspen, Secretary of State John Kerry says attacks like these are a sign the militant group is getting weaker. We have to get it right 24-7, 365. They have to get it right for 10 minutes or one hour. If you're desperate and if you know you're losing and you know you want to give up your life, then obviously you can do some harm. Officials in Turkey are assessing the damage at the airport as the investigation continues to unfold. Tina Kraus, CBS News, London. The vast majority of victims in the attack were Turkish nationals. Turkey has been on high alert following several recent bombings, including two in Istanbul that have been blamed on ISIS. Well, back here in Kentucky, the public will get a chance today to voice concerns or ask questions about Governor Matt Bevin's proposal to overhaul the state's Medicaid program. Big meeting in Frankfurt on that this afternoon. Yeah, and the hearing today comes as state officials are hearing public input on the overhaul. They heard some of that in Bowling Green yesterday. Mark Barber is joining us live from Frankfurt with more on today's meeting. Good morning, Rebecca. Governor Matt Bevin's plan to overhaul Medicaid in Kentucky was slammed by critics during its first public hearing yesterday. Now, there were about 22 people who spoke at Western Kentucky University. They think that the proposal is disastrous. They are now calling on Bevin to scrap his plan or to completely go back to the drawing board. The governor's proposal would require healthy adults to start paying small monthly premiums. The Secretary of Health and Family Services says change is needed, though, because Medicaid is costing Kentucky. Taxpayers are shelling out millions of dollars a year to fund the expansion of Medicaid. If Bevin's plan to rework the program is approved, people would lose benefits like vision and dental care. They could buy them back through a rewards program that encourages participants to work or volunteer. So we're going to not provide dental care to the individuals who need it the most. Wrong. Those kinds of things are in the My Rewards account to try to encourage individuals to be able to um, you know, take, sort of take charge of their own health care as much as possible. Now, if Medicaid officials do not approve Bevin's plan by September, more than 400,000 Kentuckians who are covered under the expansion of Medicaid would all lose their insurance. There are three public hearings on this plan. The second will be here in Frankfurt in the Capitol Annex building at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Live in Franklin County. 
Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, Mark, thank you very much. The decision, of course, on this ultimately will be made in Washington. Well, Kentucky's Attorney General and State Auditor will no longer be able to nominate members of the Executive Branch Ethics Commission under a new executive order from Republican Governor Matt Bevan. That order effectively allows Bevan to control all of the appointments to the board assigned to hold his administration accountable. A Bevan spokeswoman says the order simply restores the appointment process to the system that state lawmakers intended. An Indiana pastor accused of coming to Kentucky to try and have sex with a child has been found dead in Georgia. WKMT's Michelle Chamberlain's at our alert desk with details. David Brown was arrested earlier this month. Someone online Okay, apologize for the uh, audio problem we're having with Michelle there. The details are that uh, the pastor, Brown, was a preacher at a church in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Uh, his attorney told the paper he was in Georgia with family after being released on bond. Again, his body was discovered and it is believed to be suicide following the accusations here in Kentucky. Well, hopefully you can get outside today. It is shaping up to just be a beautiful day. It feels great out there, it Bill. It really does. You know, the question, how long will it last, especially heading into this all important Important Fourth of July weekend. Meteorologist Micah Harris is here to help us make our plans. Yeah, Micah? it's really a nice start to the day. I mean, fantastic weather anywhere you look outside. 58 degrees now in Lexington, we're 59 in Frankfort. I mean, this is a perfect start to the day. It's it's rather cool in some spots too. Now you won't need a light coat, but it is a little bit cool as you walk out the door. Let's talk about your weekend forecast. Why not break it down for you just in case you're about to take off? Small chance of rain there on Saturday. Friday and Saturday, I would say a 30% chance of rain. Not great chances, so stick to your plans. Just know there is a possibility that you could have a passing thunderstorm. Then we hit Sunday. Sunday is a better opportunity. It looks pretty stormy there on Sunday and off towards your Monday, too. So those two days are really the days to watch it. 60% chance of rain. Good news here is even if you're not having a great chance of rain Friday, Saturday, 30% on both of those days, it's still not very warm. I mean, 85 degrees, we'll still take that. And guys, all the focus will be on those fireworks. I'm going to show you when I expect this rain to move in and when it moves out coming up. All right, Micah, thank you very much. Well, hundreds of his fans gathered to say goodbye to bluegrass music legend Ralph Stanley. Funeral services were held for him in his hometown of McClure, Virginia. That's not far from the Kentucky state line. Stanley was a member of the Grand Ole Opry and a Grammy winner. Some people drove hundreds of miles just to pay their respects to the bluegrass music icon. There's been a lot of them going on, and I've followed bluegrass and gospel music my whole life. And I will cherish my dreams with Ralph Stanley and the Carter family. Stanley died last week at the age of 89. A new factory in Laurel County creating new jobs in the area. RJM International used to be based in Cincinnati, but the company's owner decided to move operations to London. The company makes and packages cosmetic products, including nail polish. It comes in in 55 gallon drums, 30 gallon drums, and 5 gallon pails. And then we take it from there and put it into all the different bottles. The job is easy enough that anyone really can do it. RJM International hopes to add at least 15 new workers by the end of the week. Well, a judge has approved a settlement that will put happy birthday to you in the public domain. A music publishing company has been collecting royalties on that song for years. It has agreed to pay back $14 million to those who have paid to use it. The song was actually written by two sisters from Kentucky. So now it belongs to everybody. Hey, that's how it should be, right? <laughs> sing it if you want. Yes, sing it loud. And let's check in now on traffic and see what is happening. Not too many issues to sing about. No, what we did have uh, earlier this morning was a problem on I-75 down around uh, Rock Castle, Laurel County. A, a tractor trailer caught fire in the overnight hours. That scene is clear. I-75 running well. Normal commute times into Lexington now. And the urban county governments, Nicholasville and Manowar, live drive traffic camera this morning shows you folks are zipping right along. No reports of any problems at at the moment. Remember, you can get the latest traffic and weather info anytime with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. Download that for free in the app or Google Play stores. Do it now so you're uh, prepared you yeah. know, when you get out there. We have a lot more news coming up for you on WKYT on your Wednesday morning. Still to come, a high school science project featuring one of America's most famous snacks still going strong nearly 40 years after the, after the experiment was conducted.
I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. The next couple of days, things are great. We hit the holiday weekend off into the 4th of July. Then it gets a little stormy, and I'm going to show you that coming up in your seven day next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. It is 58 degrees right now in Lexington. That is an awesome feel. I mean, that is well below average. Look, once we hit the afternoon, we'll still be well below average. So this is a great day. Fantastic weather today and tomorrow. Things do change, though, as we get towards your weekend. Get into that in just a few seconds, but here's the planning forecast. Kind of break it down for you throughout the day. 73 degrees. Great weather there by noontime. This is if you're going out to lunch, grabbing some friends, family members, co workers, sit out on the patio. 73 degrees. You can't beat it. 79 by the afternoon. A still patio. That's backyard weather right there. At 79 degrees, the kids will be running around the neighborhood all throughout the day. Huge dome of higher pressure. A big front just to the south of us is going to allow all that cooler and drier air to filter on in. So the next couple of days, I don't see any problems whatsoever. Now, Friday into your weekend, that's when things change just a bit. Let's break it down for you because Friday and Saturday, we're talking about a 30% chance of rain. It's not a great chance. Stick to your plans. I don't see much of an opportunity to be rained out. You got Lake Fest going on there on Saturday as well down in Jamestown, that Jamestown area in Russell County of Lake Cumberland. So a lot of firework festivities, a lot of fireworks going off Friday, Saturday, or Saturday and Sunday. And then you get off toward Monday and the big fireworks going on may just be the thunderstorms. It's unfortunate, but you know, that's the way it goes. Sunday and Monday at about 60% chances of rain. So if you're looking to stay dry, if you're looking to plan out, when can I head out? and try to knock out some of these 4th of July festivities. Friday, Saturday, I don't see many issues. Like I said, there's a 30% chance of rain, a small chance we mainly stay dry. And even temperatures aren't bad. 85 degrees is just below average. Sunday off into Monday, those are your better opportunities to actually see some rain roll on through. So let's talk about your 7-day forecast, the breakdown of it. It's 79 degrees today, then we hit tomorrow at 82. Some in the uh, uh, upper zones, in the northern zones, could still be in the upper 70s. So today and tomorrow, I see no problems whatsoever. Friday, Saturday, small chances of rain in the mid 80s. I don't see many problems out of that. Sunday into Monday, that's a different story where it's 60% chance that we could see some storms roll on through. And that could cause some problems for all those 4th of July festivities. You just got to keep in mind that all these events going on, stick to them Friday and Saturday, but no Sunday and off into Monday if you're trying to have these. This big extravaganza, this big event, just know you're going to have to dodge some of these thunderstorms. And these thunderstorms will have heavy rain along with those, as we have seen the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. All in all, it's not a bad forecast. Right. But it leads up to the 4th of July where you will have some showers. Well, it tells you how you can plan your weekend. That's right. Kind of, you know, switch it up a little bit, maybe. There you all go. Right. Thank you, Micah. 646, our time right now. Well, in a glass box in a private school in Maine, since a 40 year old chemistry experiment still going strong, this could be a good and bad thing. Decades old Twinkie. Yeah, involving a Twinkie. What about Woo. that? This experiment started in 1976 when a high school chemistry teacher was giving a lesson on food additives and shelf life. He ate one Twinkie and he saved the other. Now, he's since retired, but the snack is now in the school's office. The dean of students says she doesn't know where it's going to go next, but joked that the Smithsonian hasn't called about it yet. But so. they might. <laughs> but they could. Look at that. Right next to the Clorox wipes. <laughs> a 40 year old Twinkie. Well, it's yeah, still holding up, it that. looks like. You uh, wouldn't want to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't think so. That'd be news itself. You'd be pretty desperate. Yeah, more news coming up for you. 647, rolling towards 7 o'clock here on your Wednesday. Stay with us. Coming up, the latest from Istanbul after a deadly airport terror attack. We'll speak with two former security advisors about the investigation, plus an emotional note to self from a hero battling ALS. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning, next. Time this morning is 6.50, and CBS This Morning will have the latest from Istanbul starting at 7. There's Gail getting ready to go at the CBS Broadcast Center. The dilemma of self-driving cars having to make moral decisions. Hmm, that'll be interesting. And the Benghazi panel releases a final report. The news is back on CBS This Morning. 
Again, this coming up just a few minutes from right now. Well, the airport in Istanbul is back open this morning after suicide bombers killed dozens of people. The governor of Istanbul says the death toll is now up to 41. That's that, a new number. Just one of the stories making headlines right now this morning. WKMT's Michelle Chamberlain is joining us with a look at what else is trending right now. There will be a public meeting in Frankfurt today for people to learn more about Governor Matt Bevin's proposed overhaul of Medicaid. During the first of three meetings last night in Bowling Green, none of the 22 people who spoke up supported the governor's plans. We're also reaching out to Kentuckians who are in Turkey today, where the death toll is expected to rise after suicide bombers blew themselves up at the airport in Istanbul. And we just posted a story about an Indiana preacher who is accused of coming to Kentucky to have sex with a minor being found dead in Georgia. And why a company will be repaying millions of dollars after billing people for using the song Happy Birthday to You. Those are just some of the stories trending right now on WKYT.com. All right, and also new on WKYT this morning, a man is accused of sexually abusing a receptionist at a Lexington doctor's office. Joseph McKenzie has been arrested. Police say the Cynthia man pulled the victim into a back room where he pinned her up against a wall and groped her. McKenzie will be arraigned today on a sexual abuse charge. Three middle schoolers are facing charges for vandalism at an Anderson County park. Police say the three kids climbed the park's fence and used ball field paint to graffiti areas of that park. The park's soccer pavilion, basketball courts, Lions pavilion, and skate park were all damaged. Police say the case is now being handled by the juvenile court. Today, U.S. Representative John Yarmuth will hold a rally in Louisville to call on Congress to pass gun violence prevention legislation. It's being held as part of the National Day of Action on Gun Violence Prevention. It's scheduled for 5 in the evening in Louisville. It'll be held at Martin Luther King Jr. Park on West Chestnut Street between 6th and 7th Streets. The public's invited to attend. An event tonight will benefit the family of Lexington's latest murder victim. Early Saturday morning, police found Robert Warner laying in the park, uh, a parking lot with multiple gunshot wounds. His cousin says Warner was a father of three. Tonight's event will be at the Swahili Elks Lodge on Versailles Road. That starts at 7. Members of Warner's Motorcycle Club will also be on Georgetown Street this evening to collect money to help pay for Warner's funeral. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump will make a visit to Lexington next month. Sources confirm Trump will speak at a private fundraising event on July 11th at the Aviation Museum of Kentucky. It'll cost $1,000 per person to attend the reception and $5,400 per couple wanting to take a picture with Trump. This will be Trump's third trip to Kentucky this year, but his first in Lexington. His previous two stops were in Louisville. People in Williamsburg, the southernmost city on I-75 in Kentucky, will soon be able to buy alcohol at places other than restaurants. After voters chose yes to expanding alcohol sales in the city by an almost two-to-one margin, 448 people voted yes to expand sales, 241 voted no during yesterday's special election. Williamsburg already had restaurant-only sales, but this vote now allows package alcohol sales in stores. The city's mayor, Roddy Harrison, says expanded sales will help businesses and tourism in Williamsburg. The final touches are being made at the new Ark Encounter Park in Grant County, which is scheduled to open up next week. That park features a replica of Noah's Ark. It's scheduled to open on July 7th. Officials say they're expecting big crowds for the park's opening. The park expects to hire as many as 400 seasonal workers. Heads up for drivers in Lexington. The State Roads Department will be doing some work today on New Circle Road. The right lane of the inner loop of the circle will be closed over the railroad between Georgetown Road and Leestown. That work is scheduled to start at 9 o'clock this morning and go until 3 today. Well, it is a big move for an Eastern Kentucky distillery. Kentucky Miss Moonshine is the latest member of the Kentucky Distillers Association. They have joined the Letcher County Distillery as the 28th member of the nonprofit group. The Kentucky Distillers Association members produce 90% of the world's bourbon. Kentucky Miss Moonshine opened in 2015 in Whitesburg. It is open from Tuesday until Saturday. Its gift shop is open Monday through Saturday, oh, by the way. You know, the ones that have uh, 
had the tiff with the uh, UK Thank over the shirts. Thank you, shirt. yes. Yeah. I was about to say, we <laughs> need to mention wondering that. about that. Yeah, so that's yeah. Uh, uh, kind of still all being worked out in court. All right, it's uh, 6.55 right now. We'll check in now with Micah. And it looks pretty good as you're about to walk out the door. Defender Radar Network, nothing going on. A couple of clouds here and there, especially down south where we've had them overnight. It should be fading away for the most part early this morning. And live sky camera, boy, things look great. So if you're sitting in central northern zones, there's no doubt about a lot of sunshine. And that's allowed us to see those temperatures drop below 60 degrees. We're 58 now in Lexington, 60 degrees in Frankfurt. And then you go down south, that's where we're holding on to the mid 60s. But all in all, this is a beautiful start to the day. Afternoon, what's it look like? Well, let's go through it. 79 degrees, mostly sunny skies. No problems today. No problems for tomorrow either. I don't see any issues whatsoever. If you're heading out to lunch, sit out on the patio. It's 73 degrees. Or even take the kiddos out to the park today. Off toward the evening hours, that's really nice for grilling out. And then we go overnight and into tomorrow morning. No problems at 57 degrees tomorrow morning. You think it's cool this morning? Just wait till tomorrow morning when a lot of us are getting up and heading out and about. Let's see the breakdown for the 4th of July plans. And for the most part, I don't see any problems whatsoever. We get into your Friday, Saturday. Those are small chances of rain, guys. And so keep to any of your plans Friday and Saturday. I'll tell you this, though. For all the festivities on Sunday off into Monday, that will be a different story. Now, it's not a complete washout. You will get some breaks here and there. But those are pretty good chances of rain at 60% both Sunday off into Monday. So trying to do those fireworks, yeah. it might be a little difficult <laughs> to do that. Well, if you're having your own little private uh, get-together, maybe move that back earlier in the weekend. Right, it absolutely. Might, might make sense if it's yeah. outdoors. Siri's trying to contribute to the conversation. Oh, okay. Well, hello, Siri. <laughs> she does that from time to time. Nobody's more up-to-date than you to start your day. Thank you so much for being on WKYT. Have a good one.